three people that are getting baptised today. Um, it's a celebration, all right? So I was a head teacher for many years, and one of the things I used to say is when you're out on the sports field, you can cheer, you can scream, you can clap, you can shout. When it's in assembly, we just give them applause. I should get mayhem and 600 kids in the hall. So we just applause. But we're not in assembly, we're in church. So you can shout, you can cheer, you can clap. It's all right. Okay, so you want to celebrate. Okay. So, a little bit later on, so the last bit of our time together, we'll be out there and we're going to baptise these three wonderful people. But I just want you to be introduced to them. To let them know. So, Jenny, come and join me up here. Come on, Jenny. Yeah, come on. So this is Jenny, uh, this is Brian, her dad, yeah. and um, David's her brother, uh, and it's great that you guys have joined us and been part of our church for a little while now. Uh, and Jenny, when I said we are going to baptise people, Jenny said, oh, I'm going to baptise. So Jenny, I'm going to ask you some questions, alright? Do you love Jesus? I do. You do. I do. And With all my heart. Fantastic. And you want to give your life? To Jesus and live for Him, and, live for him. and He's Lord of your life. Yes. Fantastic, wonderful. Let's give a big cheer. <laughs> Fantastic. Blake, come on, you come. He just had his makeover. He's a bit nervous. He's going to be fine. This is Mark's family, not to mind, Dad's over there somewhere, Jason's there, there's Jason, hi. So Blake, you've got something to read, haven't you? Yeah? Hello everyone, my name is Blake and I'm 10 years old. I come to Trinity Church every week with my nanny. Church is so welcoming and fun and I look forward to it every week. When I first came to church, I was so shy and used to sit with my nanny. One week, Claire asked me to help her with the register at Kids Club. After that week, I started to become more confident. I felt like Jesus was with me everywhere and he helped me with my worries. I trust him and ask him questions. I want to be baptised because I'm so committed and I feel ready to be new Blake. And Jesus will be Lord of my life. Unfired, he gave her as a gift to a man and his wife. They didn't understand her fertility, nor that the potter would one day recall her. They let the wheel of life mold her. One day, in her innocence, a wolf came. He ripped apart the soft clay and scattered her pieces. She gathered the many facets of herself and jigsawed them together. A restless spirit, eternal, trapped, an unclean vessel, fit for wrath. The haphazard cracks filled with mud and blood, they refused to let the light in. Nothing would fix her, nothing would fill her. The blood leaked through, no, the mud leaked through, the blood congealed and stank. As the rock began to fall away, she saw herself, filthy, unforgivable. One day, in her wretchedness, a man came. He met her at the door between death and life. You're doing great, Laura. 
They've already said, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. They've said that, Jesus, I believe you died on a cross for me. You were buried. You rose again to new life. And in you, I can have new life. Where my old past has been washed clean. And new life in Christ. That's what becoming a Christian is all about. So that's happened. What's happening today is, is that it's a celebration, it's a public demonstration, and there is something very spiritual about it. It's a very special moment. But they're already saved. They know Jesus. Uh, and it's like, as we've heard a few references already, you know, Jesus was, was killed, he took upon our punishment, he was buried. That's what we're doing. When we put them under the water, they're, they're reenacting that burial in the tomb. And then he stays for three days. You won't keep them under for three days. Okay? Very quickly, they'll come up right out of the water and they're going to come out of the water as a symbolism of joining Jesus in his resurrection. Because what's happened for all three of these people is actually they used to be in a team. It was called Adam. Team Adam. If you like football, Think about football for me. Right, they're in Team Adam and they had the kit on and they played for the team and Team Adam is what all of us were born into. We're all descendants of Adam. But because of that, we're tainted with sin. We're selfish. We try really hard to be kind, don't we, nice? But we're selfish. We, we, we do things that we really regret sometimes. We say things that we regret. We, we think things we regret. And, and you know, the penalty of all that, the Bible tells us, is death and separation from God. But through Jesus, this amazing thing happens. You get the transfer window, don't you, in football, where teams get to transfer, right? So Andrew, stand up for me. You can go. Andrew, he's in Team Adam. He was in Team Adam, right? But there was a day... Right, when Andrew transferred into Team Jesus, can you just pass that over for a second? Right, he transferred from Team Adam to Team Jesus through faith in Christ. And now, you think that Andrew still thinks bad things, he still does some things sometimes, he tries really hard, but he still gets it wrong sometimes. But you know what? Because he's in Team Christ, he's actually got Jesus as king. Jesus is righteous and holy and perfect. And he is actually clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. And so when God looks at Andrew, yeah, okay, this mess still, he still makes mistakes, he's still trying to live the right life. But God sees Jesus in his purity and perfect nature and goes, hey, you're part of my team. You're part of my team. And that's an offer to all of us that we can move 
from being Team Adam, where we're just struggling with life, we're trying to do the best we can. And we can change and we can move by putting our faith in God and move into Team Jesus, where he comes and embraces us and accepts us. And he then offers us forgiveness. It's amazing. Offers us forgiveness and new life. Right. Um, Jesus told a story. He told a story about a man. And a man was on a bit of a mission. And he was walking. I don't know whether it was the South Downs or whether it was some other place. But he was walking. And as he's walking through this field, he comes across a treasure. I want you to imagine in your head a treasure you might find in the field. Maybe some Roman coins, might it? It might be some um, Saxon treasure. Do you know? Think bigger. Think bigger. Think chest. Pirate's treasure. Yeah, the crown jewel, oh yeah, that the crown jewels. Right. This treasure was so amazing. What Jesus said in his story, he said, he said, the guy, he covered it all up again. He covered it up so nobody would see it. And then he went back home and he says, he sold everything. He sold everything. And just think about what that means. He sold everything. I mean, he sold his phone. It went. Some of us might struggle with that, might not we? He sold his phone. He sold his car. Well, I'm not struggling with that one. No, I think right there. Yeah. He sold his car. He sold his house. He sold everything. Everything he had, he sold because he wanted to get all his finances in one pot. Why? So he could buy that field. And once he bought that field, the treasure was his. The treasure was his. Why did Jesus tell this story? Why would he tell a story about treasure and finding treasure, digging it up and, and becoming wealthy? Well, he's telling it to give us a glimpse of what it is like to be part of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. See, when you become a Christian, you become a citizen of a new, a new kingdom. You're in the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom. And what's it like? And he talks about a treasure. So here's a question. Who is the man? Who's the man walking through the field? I want to tell you. That's Jesus. It's Jesus walking through the field. And Jesus, does he trip over the treasure by accident? No, he says in the Bible, he said, he discovered it. He was, he was searching for it. He was looking for it because he knew where the treasure was in that field. And so he was seeking it out. And he finds the treasure. Who's the treasure? You. Yeah, it's you. Just turn to the next person next to you and say, You're a treasure. Give him a wink. Give him a little wink. You're a treasure. You're a treasure. Do you know what? You are far, far more precious. I only said you're a treasure. Nothing else. Come on. You are far more precious than a phone. Far more precious than a car. You're far more precious than the house. You're far more precious than the crown jewels to God. You are his treasure. And Jesus finds you. He told another story, he told about sheep. He said there's one sheep who's left, who lost. And he left the 99, he goes after the one. It's a similar idea. He's going after the one lost sheep. Because they are so precious to God. And then Jesus tells everything. Well, well, if you know the story of Jesus and, and his life, you know, I don't know if clothes he was wearing. What did he give? A greater love has no man than to give his life. 
to give his life. So Jesus gave everything, not just possessions, he gave his very life and nailed him to a cross. Because, because of my mess, because of my wrongdoing, because of my, my just kind of unbelief and selfishness, I can't have a relationship with God. I can't do it. I, doesn't matter how hard I try. I can try and be the perfect person. I can try and be the perfect son or the perfect husband, the perfect dad. I can try and be the perfect in my job. That would not save me. I, I can try and, and, and actually just you know, give lots away and just be blessing and love people and care for people and do lots of good things. Yeah? That won't save me. Save myself. The Bible tells us that we're dead in our mess. We need someone to come and save us. Come and save us. And Jesus gives his life so that I don't have to pay the penalty of my sin and my mess. And if I put my faith and trust in him, he says, Come into my new family. That whole thing of transferring teams. It's an amazing offer. You are a treasure to God that is beyond measure. And God's love for you is so much that he sent Jesus, his own son, to deal with all the mess so that you not only can have new life and joyful life as a Christian now, but he promises us that death will no longer be the end and we can have eternity with him forever. And he's going to recreate the earth. And it's going to be this amazing place of beauty and peace. No pain, no sorrow, no tears. And he says, come. I love you that much. That I've done everything that needs to be done so that you can come. You can come. But you need to come to him. We were out swimming as a family a few, I don't know, last week or some time. And it was quite cold the water. And suddenly my son, uh, Jake, he got cramped. Why am I bringing it up? Because it's a perfect illustration. But he's got cramp. When you're out of the sea, out of your depth, and you've got cramp, there is nothing you can do. It's so much pain, and your legs are ah, and you just can't swim, you can't do anything. Thankfully, his younger brother was there on hand. They could rescue him and save him. Jake couldn't save himself in that moment. I can't save myself from eternal mess. I need someone to come and save me. And Jesus comes. He's given his life, sold everything, to get me the treasure that he possesses. And it's an offer to all of us. If we just turn, all right, we're going this way. If we just turn and go, okay, I'm not gonna go my own selfish way. I'm gonna follow you, Jesus. I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna trust that you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And I give my life to follow you. And when we do that, do you know what? We don't really have to step. He comes. He comes. And he embraces us. And he loves us. And he invites us to join in his wonderful family in the church. <coughs> That's on offer to all of us. For those of you that know Jesus already, I hope today is a day that will just rekindle something in you. As you heard the three people just share their story a little bit, it may have just reminded you of your own story, of the day when God came and met with you. Don't keep it a secret. Share it. Share it with others. Just remind yourself of the love of God. If you don't know Jesus, I'll tell you, it's not an accident you're here. I know uh, Blake or Jenny or, or Laura might have invited you, but it's not an accident you're here. And I would encourage you, Give it some thought. You really are worth more to God than the crown jewels. He loves you so much. And he's saying, come. Come and be part of my family. If you want to find out more, we're going to be running an Alpha course in the autumn. Alpha is a great uh, little uh, few weeks course where you can find out about Christianity and what it is to follow Jesus. Simon and Claire are going to be kind of hosting that. So if you're interested, get in contact with us. Right? Chat to Simon and Claire or, or just email the church and we can link you up. Because we'd love you to find out more about this wonderful Jesus. I'm going to pray. 
and then we're going to make our way outside. I will explain what we're going to do. So let me pray, and then we'll, I'll tell you what we're going to do when we get outside. All right? Father God, we just want to thank you for our time together. We thank you for your uh, amazing love, demonstrated in Jesus, who came and died to deal with all our mess, but then rose again to new life that gives us the hope that we too will share in resurrection life with you for eternity. We thank you. I just pray that each one of us would know today how treasured we are by you. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Jenny, you come forward, you? 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 Can I ask some people just to pray with Jenny while we're... Oh, 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 oh. Okay, where's Jay? Wow, I'll pray for you Jenny. <laughs> Heavenly oh, Father, yeah, thank you so much for the wonderful <laughs> picture. Thank you. 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 You put your faith in Jesus. Yeah. In the glory of your life. Yeah. So we have pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for coming to Laura, for your blessing on her.